Um, and it just seems like it's much harder to put much harder to ring fence these tax bases or, or certain forms of capital to tax in a world where uh, liquid wealth moves much with much lower friction. Yeah, technology definitely impacts the tools that people have that that authorities have to restrict the flow of capital. Mm -hmm. And that's one way, you know, when I looked at Bitcoin, I when I describe Bitcoin to people, I say that it, you know, it's 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 so far the most you know efficient, credible, and and decentralized way to transfer value peer to peer. Mm -hmm. Um and so, you know, before if you wanted, you know, before Bitcoin, if you wanted to uh, restrict global flows of capital, right? If I want to send money to Japan, how do I do it, right? Mm. You know, um, if I, you know, I could, st I could stuff cash in an envelope and send it, but that's obviously limited. Mm -hmm. I could bring physically on some sort of transport, but of course, that's subject to all sorts of customs and physical checks. Um, so realistically, I would have to have my bank send their bank money. And mm -hmm. so if the, if the governments want to restrict that in some way or put rules on it or surveil it, they don't have to enforce it at the personal level. They just have to right. enforce it on the bank level. And right. that's easy to do. Um, and so what Bitcoin does is it gives you know everyone with an internet connection uh, in the world and an ability to send peer to peer. Um, and so the enforcement point for preventing that mm -hmm. is on the individual level, right. which is orders of magnitude more more points to enforce yeah. and more likely to stir up, you know, backlash if right. you, inf if you, if they, if they overstep their ability to enforce something and then they get pushed back from that, um, that's, it's a, it's a much riskier proposition to enforce. And so I, yeah, I, the, certainly technology plays a role in the tools of financial repression that are, that are, you know, likely or unlikely to work. And you basically need higher levels of authoritarianism to mm. overcome higher levels of technology and when it comes to moving money around. So for example, right. you know, maybe if you're North Korea or China, you could still restrict it uh, or restrict a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have some semblance of rule of law and freedom of speech and relative freedom of transaction, uh, it's much harder to, to restrict things mm. as, as technology enables more capital flows. Yeah. So again, we're back to that. Um, the number of enforcement points, right? That's effectively the cost of enforcement or it's, it's yes. commensurate to the cost of enforcement for government. And that impacts their uh, ability, right? Uh, um, that impacts their profitability as a taxing authority, effectively. It's like there's a greater cost now to um, imposing this tax. This just makes me think like how much, <laughs> this is a big question probably, how much of what you think we're seeing in the world today is a result of these technological changes that governments, I guess, are waking up to these new technological realities and the explosion of enforcement points? Um, is that related to this seeming uh, clamping down? Governments seem to be trying to re-centralize power, maybe in the face of decentralizing technology, something like that. I think to some degree, I mean, I think this is the direction we're heading in. I mean, speaking of IMF papers, they've had papers along with the ECB on on things like central bank digital currencies and how those would increase their ability to automatically do enforcement points. Basically, mm -hmm. if, you know, if, let's say you ban cash, right? So, and again, you can mostly do it at the banking level and the, and the merchant level. You can say, okay, we're not going to go and get every piece of cash out there, but we're going to mm -hmm. say, you know, cash is not legal tender, uh, banks, if they get cash, they, you know, they either reject it or it's just one way. They never send out cash. They'll take cash, but they won't send it back out. And merchants, mm -hmm. you know, you know, if you're if you're accepting more than, you know, five thousand dollars worth of cash a year, you're going to be taxed extra or it's just not allowed. So you can do you can, you know, effectively be in cash and then you can encourage the use of of you know software money, central bank mm -hmm. digital currencies that can be programmed to be more captive. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's, it, it's, it's basically a way of doing coercion, um, you know, with less friction. Right. Um, and, and so there's basically a couple, so technology strikes both ways. Uh, and so it gives people more options, but it, it also gives those authorities more options to the extent that they can corral entities into using them. Right. Um, and it also, you know, one of the only profitable ways to to do something when you have a lot of enforcement points is through um, 
high penalties. And that goes back to the the you know gold banning that I mentioned, where mm. uh, you, you didn't have that many prosecutions, but you had 10 years in prison. So how many people mm. would take that risk? Um, and so it was actually pretty low cost to enforce, but it also wasn't, um, you know, you don't need complete enforcement for it to work. Mm -hmm. You just need some semblance. You need to narrow the exit doors so mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe not fully, they're not like airtight, but they're constrained enough that the, that the plan's working. And basically, I mean, you had some people, some entities just hodled gold for four decades. You know, it's, it's not like all gold went to the treasury, yeah. uh, but you, you couldn't just publicly trade gold around. Right. So, right. so, so you added frictions. And so even if someone wanted to own gold, you just made it much less desirable. So if, if before you would have ranked gold a 10 out of 10 asset, you would have ranked the treasury, you know, a six out of 10 asset. Yeah. Well, now they said, oh, well, now gold's like a five out of 10 asset because right. I, I face all sorts of risks and problems if I try to use it. And so, uh, and I want the, I want us to win the war anyway. So I guess I'll hold the treasury. Right. right. So, um, <laughs> You know, there's, there's, it's, it's, it's about making, it's about adding enough frictions to, you know, get, yes. get the, get the behavior that's desired. Yeah, yeah, like tweaking the, the game board, right? The incentives yeah. and the rules of the game so slightly to tilt aggregate behavior in the direction you desire. Yes, as a yes. policymaker. So interesting, um, and it is so interesting that the you know, the bottom of this game does seem to be gold ultimately, right? It's like whoever, the ability to enforce those types of policy actions is really premised on your, you know, the strength of your law, the strength of your military, which is, um, again, I mean, the reason, the re correct me if I'm wrong here, but the reason the U.S. is able to re rewrite the rules of the global banking order post-World War II is because, well, we won the war and we had the most gold. Yeah, at least historically. And it was actually, it was during the war, 1944, when they did the Bretton Woods Agreement. And basically, countries had been shipping their gold to the U.S. to protect it right. in the event that they were overrun. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the United States had a ton of gold on its own, and then they were also holding the gold physically yeah. of other nations. Right. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's gold, it's geography. So the United States yes. was, was blessed with the ge geography it had. It was physically mm -hmm. removed from the worst of the war. Mm -hmm. It had access to both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. It had natural resources. Mm -hmm. It had, you know, all, all those details. Yeah. And then military strength and the ability, you know, a large population that is, you know, organized rather effectively. So, you know, basically, yeah, if you if you can get that that access to gold, natural resources organization military then mm -hmm. you're essentially the one that can write the rules wow